Tommy, I have some fantastic news. Last week's episode with Mikel Bridges, I mentioned that Ty Jerome owed me money. I got a text from Ty this week saying, can you please have your podcast listeners stop DMing me and mentioning me? You put your <laughs> minions on to him. I think Ty yes. had a rough week last week. Yes. He said something along the lines of, this feels like a cult. Anyways, I appreciate the listeners who reached out to Ty to remind him of his uh, late invoice. Did you charge interest? I did not charge interest, but he did pay me 950 bucks on Cash App. So I appreciate it, Ty. Thanks for coming through. I had no doubt that you'd you'd honor our agreement. And, uh, and of course, Cash App made it super easy. The World Financial Group business model offers a unique opportunity to help make financial independence and wealth protection accessible to a diverse group of people. Their mission is to help individuals create the life they want to live while protecting their loved ones and planning their financial legacy. Interested in joining WFG? Go to their website at www.worldfinancialgroup.com slash JJ Retired to learn more. All right, let's welcome in our guest, Pascal Siakam. Pascal, what's up, man? What's Good up, to have man? you. Thanks for having me. I feel like I'm big time now. You know? <laughs> made it. I made it. Made it. We've had, we've had a couple of your former teammates on. We had Fred on last fall mm. and and we had Demar on as well last okay. fall so that's a um, good roster right there what we've learned Tommy and I were talking about this what we've learned is that the uh the Toronto Raptors fan base is strong mm. and generally speaking from our experience with those two guys you know there's a lot of buzz about these appearances right. so you need to step it up I mean I don't know I don't think I can <laughs> like that's like you got Fred I know first of all Fred gives like great interviews and stuff and like so I know his podcast was probably on point point. and then you got Dumar so like that's tough it's tough to, I'm gonna try my best but right. they have been asking for you for a while I think since yeah? the show since the show started oh yeah because they leave comments people leave comments whenever mm -hmm. and what's been happening is like we'll post a player from like another team that has nothing to do with you or the Raptors yeah, yeah, and everything yeah, yeah. and there'll always be like three or four people being like wins Pascal for real? <laughs> that's interesting like I wouldn't like, I wouldn't eventually. expect that I wouldn't yeah. expect that but yeah I'm honored I want to I want to get something out of the way right at the beginning of the conversation Let's get it <laughs> and that is Kawhi shot because <laughs> <laughs> because because I love it we flew in this morning mm. and because of COVID, I, I hadn't really been here. I'd came once uh, my first year with the New Orleans. We we were mm -hmm. here the night you guys got yep. your rings, yep. which yep. was an awesome, awesome experience yep. for me. Yep. It was, it was one of the best nights of my life. Thank you, <laughs> NBA, for that. Um, and and But I realized it's only the second time I've been back to Toronto. As we got breakfast this morning, we were driving by Scotiabank Arena. And um, and I just kind of wanted to relive, relive that a little mm. bit, a little bit of a masochist here, but relive it a little bit with you. I rewatched the tape a few times uh, this morning. Um, you're at the top of the key. Mm -hmm. Tell me what's going through your mind as right. Kawhi gets to his spot and takes that shot. Yeah. Um, well, I think at that point for me, I'm just like, well, I don't know. I think I was. I don't think I was playing that well that game. Like it was. It was a weird game, right? Like it was. Obviously, game seven, like, it's crazy. Um, but, yeah, he gets the ball on top of the key. So, I, I, obviously, we got to get the ball to Kawhi. Like, that's the, that's the play. Like, there's, there's no other play. We got to get him the ball. And and my man, I think, who was guarding me? I think it was, like, either Joel or Ben was guarding me. And Kawhi had the ball. And they both went to him. And I was, like, I was wide up at the top of the key. And I was, like, waiting. And I'm, like, okay, I don't know what's going on. I know Kawhi's going to shoot it. But it's looking, like... They both got him. Like it's Ben and it's like and it's, and, and it's Joe. So and obviously they have high hands and everything. So I'm thinking like I don't know how he's gonna get this off. I know he's gonna get it off. I don't know what to do. Like I was just literally watching. I felt like I was, I was I was like a like a supporter too. Like I was on the I was on the, on the side and just watching because I'm just there like waiting and I'm like okay like what is he gonna do? Like is he gonna shoot it? Is he gonna pass it? Like what's going on? And yeah, it was. It was crazy, bro. Like, I, I, for me, I'm just like, I just wanted him to get it off. That's my only thing. Like, how is he going to get it off? Because it's like, it, it looked impossible, to be honest. But um, he got it off. And yeah, like all the bounces, just watching it. <laughs> all of us. <laughs> when it first hit the rim, did you think there was any chance that ball was going to go in? No way. Like, it looked like it was coming off. Like, I, like right back. Like, it looked like yeah. it was coming off. But then he hit it. And it's like. I'm just like, if you look at me in the video, I don't, I don't even know if you can see me, but like, I'm just like waiting and I'm like, oh, like kind of like all the bounces and 
yeah, the rest was yeah, and I, like you know, it was history. Well, <laughs> we're well, I, we're going to touch base a little bit on the the finals, the finals run, and, and the championship. Um, it just a, an incredible moment in Toronto sports history, up mm-hmm. there with with Joe Carter's walk off home run for sure. Uh, I have one small thing to say because yeah. I I didn't watch the clip. It was so painful. I didn't yeah. watch the clip for well over a year. For real? Yes. And wow. I was scrolling through Instagram one day, and there was a fan angle from right behind your bench, mm-hmm. that Sports Center or House Highlights, one of those Somebody accounts got. posted on IG. And it was the first time I'd rewatched the clip. Mm-hmm. And what I realized from rewatching the clip was with, when Kawhi caught the ball, he got a running start and traveled. Oh my God! Come on, man. We're not gonna do this, man. I'd say we've talked about this at least three times in the show. Right? No, no, no. We're not gonna up. do this. We're not gonna do this. There was no travel. No, there's no way. Like, and yeah, there's no travel. What are some of your other memories from that series? Well, I you think had a big, you had a big game. Yeah, I think it was like uh, game. T- was it game, game two? One, I, think I think it was like game two or something. It was here. I think it was at home. Yeah. Um, I think it was game one. It was game one. It was jumped, game one? Because you jumped oh, yeah, on yeah, game yeah, yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, it was, go, it was, it was game one. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. I think, yeah, game one. So, yeah, that was, that was like, it was really good. But it was a tough series. Like, I mean, like, they, they, I think the way we matched up, it was like, you know, obviously, we got Joe, we got Ben, like, all tough, you know, on defense. And, and you got, they have shooters everywhere. And um, it was, it was a tough series. And, and, and I think for me, what I remember is like, I don't know it was game three, or like, Joe was going crazy and he was doing all the. He did a windmill. Yeah, like, he was, he was like in the zone. And I think it was just always like back and forth, back and forth. Uh, I remember game, was it in Philly? Was it game five in Philly? Or game six in Philly? When Kawhi was kind of like going crazy too, like at, uh, it was in Philly, like he was. It was no, that was I, I. I think we brought this up with Fred. That was Game Four. That was Game Four. We were up in the fourth, mm. and Kawhi just took yeah, over he just down took off. Like yeah, yeah, that and game was crazy. I'm gonna confirm this at some point when we have Kyle on the pod. Mm. But Kyle told me after the series, he was like. He's like, I remember in that fourth quarter, I thought the series was over. Yeah. Like, I thought we no, no, it was Kawhi tough. saved. Like- no, it's Kawhi just like, he took <laughs> over. Like, he literally took over because it was a tough environment. And, like, I think nothing was going in for us. Like, nothing was going well. Like, we, was, we wasn't playing really well. And, and he just, like, yeah, Kawhi just, like, he just took over. And, and I think after that, it was like, oh, okay, like, we're good. You know what I mean? Like, because it was always, like, kind of, like, back and forth. Like, we win, and then you guys go and, like, blow us out. And then we, we come back and get a win. And, and it was just, yeah, it was it was tough. But. But yeah, like that game seven, like I, I always, you know, it's, it's crazy thinking about it. Like just the what ifs of life, the what ifs of yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, do you guys think that you you will win though? If we, there's like, no guarantee. In, we still had to, yeah, we like, still had to win the, the conference yeah, finals, sure. and of course you can't predict that Kevin's going to get hurt, and that Clay is going to get hurt. Yeah, so. Like it was, yeah, it's, it's all, yeah. What there's, if, right? There's what ifs. But yeah, there's what but ifs. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure you, you kind of recovered a little bit from it, a little bit maybe. It's just funny because we every time we have somebody <laughs> from that team on, it comes up and we have the same sulk. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's tough though. That's tough, bro. Ka- 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 you you spent that year with Kawhi, and I remember one of my friends that works for works in the NBA, works in the front office in the NBA. He texted me early on in the season. It was probably like 15, 20 games. You guys were rolling, obviously, mm-hmm. that year. Um, and he said, "Am I crazy to to say that the Kawhi comp is Michael Jordan hmm. in the sense of their game? Not right. uh, look, Michael is the yeah, goat obviously. for sure." But that was really the first year we saw Kawhi out of the San Antonio system. Mm-hmm. And it was a lot of just getting to his spots, and, shooting over people, obviously the defensive prowess. Mm-hmm. Um, being up close and seeing that and seeing you know, a top three, top five player in the NBA, right. how impressive was he that year? Yeah, no, nah, it, was, it was super impressive. And I think, obviously, like, it was all this, like, you know, load management and, and everything going on, right? Like, and I think it was, like, it was always, like, a – like a thing and 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 for us and I, and I watched the Clippers like you know the first year he got there and it, it was like yeah like there was always issue like, oh is he practicing or is he or he's not playing today he's playing today I think for us like we embraced that you know like we was like yo like when when Kawhi is not playing we're like we excited like everyone is like I'm like yo today I'm getting 20 shots like I'm, I'm you know what I mean like we, we took it as like a challenge and every time he didn't play because we knew that when he was playing like he was playing at the highest level. Like he gave us like everything, and and like you said, like get to where he, like it's just incredible to watch. Like and I think for me, like I, I've kind of always watched Kawhi a little bit because like coming to college, like he went to um, San Diego State, I think, and and 
And I, I've, I've always watched like kind of like low mid, like mid majors, like type of schools because I, I went to New Mexico State. So I always watched him and it's like, yo, the way he developed and like he was always, like you said, in the system. But when he came with us, it was just like incredible to see him like just get to wherever you wanted to. He was strong, like he can shoot. Like he, like he would just, like he could just impose his will and get where he wants and just elevate and shoot. And like it was just incredible. Like he did it every single night. Well, the nights he played, <laughs> which was, which was, I mean, for who was okay with, like we we had fun with it because I think if you watch our back to backs, like our record of back to backs, like it was incredible because we was always excited during back to backs um, to play. But but yeah, like he, yeah, he's on, he was on another level like that year, especially like, and for me just to watch it like up close, like it was crazy. Did you feel like you learned anything from him from like a focus standpoint mentally? Um, yeah, I think one thing I learned obviously is like he just always had the same, and I'm trying to learn from it because I think for me like I'm I'm a pretty emotional player and um and like when things are not going my way like it was it was always like oh my god like because I know the amount of work that I put in I wanted to go my way every time and and one thing with him is like things weren't going his way like you couldn't you couldn't tell like. It was the same. Like it didn't. It didn't matter if he made five shots in a row or he missed five shots in a row. Like he was the well, same. But there's a lot of there's a lot of memes of that. Of yeah, like that. <laughs> no, no, it's <laughs> and, and that's him though. Every every day, like, and and I think that was incredible for me. Like it was just I, I always watched that and I, and I always thought like it was super impressive and something that I felt like like I, if I could have that type of like focus and like just knowing like even kill mentality that like no matter what I just got to stay the same. Like it's it's incredible. You mentioned Kawhi's development, and I think uh, we should spend a decent amount of time here on your story mm. um, because it's such an incredible story. There was a great article from about four, three or four years ago uh, from ESPN um, about your introduction to the game of basketball. Mm. I would like to hear – you can tell the story better than I can. Right, right. But, um, you know, when did you start playing? How were you introduced to the game? Um, what was that first court like? Right, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think well for me, uh, I started. I, I was well because I played soccer. Obviously, I mean, every African plays soccer growing up, um, and 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 my brothers played basketball, right? Like, and for me, it was just I was always that child. I was I, I'm the I'm the youngest, and and I, and and I always wanted to do something different. Like, I never wanted to do the same thing that my brothers did. So all my brothers play basketball, and I was like, "Yeah, I never play basketball." Like I said it from the beginning, like I, I, I don't want to play basketball. Give me away from me. I want to be different. And and I went to so I just because I went to boarding school. Like I, I was always away when, most of the time, and I came back um, during the holidays, and and um, I was at home, and one of my friends came in, and he was like, "Yeah, like there's this basketball camp, like." Now there's this basketball player. I mean, he's from Cameroon, Lungba Mute, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool, like, whatever. And 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 my friends was like, oh yeah, let's go. And I and and I just followed them, and I was like, let's let's get it. And we go. I get there, we play, and and I don't even remember. What, I don't remember what I did. I don't even know if I was good or not. Like, I, to be honest, I have no idea. And he had to select like people to. So it was like a pre-selection, and then the, the selection, and you go into the actual camp. In a, in a different city, which was in Yaounde, because I'm from Douala in Cameroon. So I do that, and I don't know how, but I get selected to go to, to the actual camp. And I'm just like, this, this is the basketball without borders. Yeah, but no, yeah. no, that's not basketball without not borders. Yeah, that's that's Lugba Mute. Like, that's and, in Cameroon. And, like, we're still in how Cameroon. Old, how old are you, and, and also how tall are you? Yeah, well, I probably was like six, six, three, six, four, six, six, five, maybe. Like, I, I don't remember, like, exactly. Yeah. And I was like, 15 probably 15 years old and yeah I do that and I go to the to the camp and and it was it was okay and I think I think Joel was at that camp too if I if I if I remember properly like I think he was at the same camp in Yaounde um and so I, I do that and then after that um that's when basketball that would comes like a couple of years after I think it was like a year or a couple of years after basketball that would come and I think from me doing that camp like people know me a little bit and they just know about me. I don't really play because I'm in bowling school. I don't really play in the leagues and stuff or like all year. I just come during the holidays and I probably go play a game or something and whenever I feel like it. Um, but then after that, I get selected to go to basketball without borders in South Africa. And and I go there and it was like, I mean, it was like a eye-opening experience. Like just, it was like so many NBA players, right? It was like, I don't even remember. I think CJ Watson. I think it was like uh, Carlson. Um, who else? It was like a lot of coaches. Um, I mean, the late BJ Johnson, like 
scout from from the, the Rockets and Masai Ujiri was there. Like, yeah. So, all I mean, I don't obviously. I'm this is foreign to me. Like, I, I don't know nothing really about the NBA. I, I don't think I've watched an NBA game then because we couldn't even watch games anyway. So, um, I never watched an NBA game. Nothing. So I go there. And and one of the reasons why I always say it's funny because my sister lived in South Africa at that time, so in my head I'm like, yo, I haven't seen my sister in so long, and they give me a free ticket to go to South Africa. I'm like, yo, like this is the perfect opportunity, you know? Like <laughs> I'm gonna see my sister. I haven't seen her in a while, so like that was really my motivation because I'm like, I'm thinking like, okay, I'm, I'm probably not good enough to to make whatever is happening there. Um, so I go there. And then it was like, yeah, like I see a lot of like NBA players, and, and I think from there I just had like, yo, like damn, like this is pretty cool, like, and and these people are supposed to be these stars in in the NBA, and they just here like hanging out with us and kicking, and it just it just felt normal, and it was like something that I felt like really inspired by, and I and I was like, yo, like, like why not, you know, like why not try and do that, and um, and then from there, my my dad, we had a scholarship. He talked to some school. He did it himself. Like he talked to some school, they was able to get me a scholarship to go to a prep school in Texas, and I was just like, "Hey, let's get it. Let's try." I have so many questions. <laughs> so many follow up questions. <laughs> First of all, mm. from the from the the time of the local camp, yeah, uh, from Luke's local camp. By the way, I played with Luke oh, yeah, uh, yeah. twice actually. Once mm. in Milwaukee, and then in LA yeah, with LA. the Clippers. The Clippers He's yeah. all time great human being. That's my dog. Um, but from the time of going to Luke's camp to when you went to Basketball Without Borders, how much basketball were you playing? So you would not touch a ball, and then you'd go home for the holidays yeah, from because, boarding school. And yeah, well, because I was in boarding school, and, and and we have trimesters, and and it's like little two weeks vacation we have in between because I'm away for like three months, and then I come back for like two weeks, and then there's like like a little team out there, and I'm like, all right, my friends is like, oh, okay, let's go, and then we just go and play. Like, it was never, like, we never really, like, because I was never there. Like, I was, and back in boarding school, it's like in a village, um, it's called Bafia, it's, 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 it's where, actually, where Lung Bamute is from. Um, so, we just go there, and I play soccer all day, like, because there's nobody really plays basketball. Like, we, we, we play basketball on, like, a I don't even know if it's, <laughs> like, land, you know what I mean? It's, it's nothing, like, you don't, there's no hoop, really, like, and so I'm playing soccer all year, and then I go for like a couple of weeks. I'll play like maybe two, one game in in like a little league out there. So there was no real basketball. You right? weren't there was a, was there a court where you working? Yeah, on there your was game? there was a court. I wasn't working on my game. Like, <laughs> this just, is, like what? <laughs> this is incredible. Yeah, no, I, did, I didn't. I didn't okay. work on my game. I don't think I, I actually learned how to like actually work on my game until I came to the U.S. Wow. So, but so once, yeah. So once basketball border without borders happened, you you get identified, um, and your your father works out this scholarship mm -hmm. uh, to I believe it's called God's Academy. Yep, God's in, Academy in Texas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the most Texas name. Yeah. For high school. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Of course. Yeah. Of course, it's called God's Academy. Anyways, uh, so uh, at that point now, you're like you're full tilt, you're mm. full throttle, you're yep. you're you're really into basketball. Mm -hmm. And you've, but you've never really watched basketball no. either. So, do you do you remember your, your sort of your first viewing experiences, or like was there a player that you sort of were like, oh, I could I could do what he does? Was do there a player that yeah, you yeah. sort of modeled your game after? Um, I think early on, like again, like I didn't I didn't watch that much basketball, right? Like so in my head, I'm just like, okay, like coming in, I always seen like African kids. It's like you get to a certain level and and you're big because like, you're pretty tall and, and it's like you're on a post right like you run you dunk and early on i think one thing i i, I just always thought like damn like I, I wish i can do like more like i just because again coming back to me being a little kid i wanted to be different like i, I never wanted to do the same thing so i'm, I'm always thinking like yo like i don't want to be just on a block and just you know like be a post player like i want to i want to do different things so I always like kind of watch like players that like handle the ball, like, you know, like, like Kevin Durant or um, Tracy McGrady, like anything that I could find really. I think at that point it was just like, I'm just trying to find anybody that's kind of tall and that can handle the ball. <laughs> and like, that's what I want. And it was, it was a dream obviously, because I was nowhere near those players, but in my head it was always like, yo, like I want to be different. Like I, I want, I don't want to just be on the post. Like, and, and those are the people that I kind of, I kind of watch early on. Would you, 
Would you describe your game as somewhat unconventional? I, I think it's different. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's hard. I was thinking about this. Like, it's hard to classify you as a player because right. you do so many different things, and you do so many different things well. But there's also just like there's a fluidness, mm -hmm. but also a herky jerkiness to how right. you move. Yeah. There's not a lot of guys your your size that are shooting floaters. Mm -hmm. It's there's there's just this whole package of stuff that you've sort of picked up along the way. Right. Right. And I think like again, like I said, I, I just. Some of those things, I feel like just it was just there, right? Like, and and obviously, I work, I work a lot. I work, I work really hard on some things, but um, I just feel like even coming up, like I, like I said, my mentality was always to want to be different and do different things, and and I just didn't want to like, and and I and I played in the post because I had to, right? Like <laughs> in college, like that's all I did. Like I, I didn't shoot a three in college. I think I shot like like ten threes my whole college career, like. Um, we were talking about this in the plane over how few threes you had taken before you made it to the NBA. Yeah, like I I, I didn't shoot any threes at all. Like it was like maybe like three. I was on the post or or like in college, um, but but I always wanted to like I wanted to be different. And I remember going to Rico Hines because that's that's the guy I worked out with. And it, from the first day, we always said like we're gonna like we're not gonna just work on post moves. Like we're gonna work on ball handling. We're gonna you know work on like floaters and and your touch and. And and I always felt like I was I was mobile enough, you know, to do different things, and and um, and I just think it's natural. It just it just happened, you know. The the I think the soccer parallel with footwork is certainly there. Mm -hmm. If you look at a lot of guys, European players, Steve Nash, mm -hmm. uh, Joel, uh, mm -hmm. guys that grew up playing soccer and yep, were around yep. the game a bunch, there's some footwork there. I don't know that your touch is like a natural thing that people have. It's, mm -hmm. it's like a, there's a gift there. Not everybody can have that that touch. Um, how did you How did you end up at New Mexico State? Yeah, was, were you recruit? I couldn't find anything on yeah. your recruitment, dude. I'm yeah, like, it was a secret, man. Like, like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, like because I had no offers. Like you know, I came from like you know, like just literally when when we said nothing, nothing because there was like no no word out there of me being, you know, like recruited. And, and then like, I, cause I came when I was 18, like I, I moved to the U S when I was 18 and I went to a prep school. So I, I never went to high school in, in here. So I, I went to high school back home and I graduated from high school. And, and one funny thing is that I almost went to college back home for like two weeks or like three weeks or something. So, so I graduated, I was good. And I started even college like for like a little bit. And then I moved over when I was 18 and I came in, I went to a prep school because then like I had to get like, you know, my grades and, and some of the the courses that I took back home didn't qualify or or whatever the case might be. So I had to like figure that out. So I, I went to, to, to prep school and I, mean, I, don't, I don't even think we actually went to school. I, I don't think I should say that on the record, but, <laughs> but, but yeah, like it was. It sounds like you went to the Mount Zion of Texas. <laughs> God's Academy. <laughs> There were 12 <laughs> students in the school, all of which played basketball. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not going to touch on that, but but but, but yeah, so I, I just did that. And then, I, so from there, I met, that's when, like, I, I met, like, you know, Coach Menzies. And, and, and it was like, oh, because the funny thing is, like, the coach from God's Academy, his son went to New Mexico State. So there's the connection. That's there the connection, right? Like, so. I, I I meet the coach and then it's like oh like this is basically the only offer you got like you know like it's like yo like you want to come in you're gonna retire one year and and after that you're gonna be you're gonna we're gonna make you like el eligible and you're gonna be able to qualify and, and and get get there so I had no other plans like there was no other offers like it, it was nothing so I was just like yeah did, let's do it did you face any kind of uh, real competition when you were in high school. Um, well, we, we, we played prime prep. There was like a, I, I don't know who, I think Emmanuel Moody was in that team. Um, Terrence Ferguson, he was like, I think he was like probably like 14 or 15 or something, like just shooting threes, going crazy. That team was always stacked. And, um, I think those were the only actual players that I remember. Maybe I played some other people, but I don't really know. Um, and we weren't really that good. So yeah, <laughs> the real, but you, but you I, felt like you were like, even when you just got there, you felt like you were holding your own, even when you were, well, not really. I mean, I think my first games was pretty terrible. Like I, I don't even know, like first of all, the beat was probably like, like 50 or something like, and, and, 
And I think one of the first games we played against Prime Prep, we went there and it was like, I think that was like my first like real like America experience, you know, like we went to some school like in high school and it felt like, like there was like a lot of people, like there was like cheering and and there was music and for me it was just all like okay like what's going on you know because I, I i'm coming from cameroon and i'm like i don't know none of this like this is all foreign to me and there was really like there was really good at basketball and i'm like oh my god like this is nothing compared to what i've seen before um and that was just like what preps like some prep school and and i think emmanuel moody at that time like he was it was incredible like some of the things that they were doing was like yo like how do you even do this you know and it was like Probably my first games, like one of my first games in the, in, the, in the U.S. and my first basketball games. I want to get the timeline right here on New Mexico State. You, you redshirted, mm -hmm. then you got freshman of the year in the WAC, mm -hmm. and then you got player of the year in the WAC. Yeah. So you did all that after playing four years yeah. of organized <laughs> basketball. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Were, were you? I want to sort of get into your mindset back mm -hmm. then. Like, were you surprised at how successful you were at yeah. at, at this game? For um, someone who had just picked it up, right, right, or did right. you did you pick it up and be like, "Oh, I'm awesome"? Yeah, well, do you have I, I do you have a rational confidence? I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I I was definitely confident, and 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 I think that that little time from like me going to me going to a prep school and then coming to New Mexico State and that redshirt year, I think was like really important for me because, um, like, well, New New Mexico, right? Like, obviously, there's not much to do, right? So, um. I think I went to like in college. I went to like three parties like my whole college career, because well, it was terrible. Because it was terrible. That's why. Because we had to drive like <laughs> we had to drive everywhere to go to parties, and every time we get to a party, it gets shut down. And <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm done with the partying life in, in New Mexico, and and we had to drive to El Paso to go somewhere. And I'm like, I'm not driving 45 minutes uh, from Las Cruces to El Paso to go to a party. I was like, yo, like I'm I'm done. I probably went to like three parties, and then. So my whole retro year, I'm in the gym, like, every day. Like, I, I have my, you know, it was funny. Like, I just had, like, a little thing there. You, you see my locker, there's, like, my toothbrush. It's, like, so I'm in there every day. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes if I'm, if I'm too tired, because I live kind of far uh, away from campus, so I had to walk to go back home. So I'm like, yo, it's late. I'm not trying to walk, so I'm just sleeping on the couch. Wake up the next day, go to go to class whenever I feel like it but again not on the record <laughs> but but yeah like just go to class come back and do it over again like it was it was just constant um and it was a, a it was a um a coach there like Preston um he was like my guy we was always in the gym every day and it was just that like for like a whole year I'm in the gym every single day and I think from that I kind of like started gaining a little bit more confidence in my game um cuz I put the work in and 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 my, my first year, my freshman year, uh, I didn't I didn't start. I didn't play really until like one of the players got hurt. And it was like, oh, man, like this is, you know, like it was just all happened. And, and I played and, and, I, and I did well. And it was just like, you know, let's just keep keep building on that. When did the NBA sort of the enter the picture for you? Uh, and, and, uh, even going back to when you first started in Africa, was mm -hmm. that the dream? Was that the goal? Or were you just... You just smitten with the game. Yeah. You said, I want to pursue this. Yeah, no, I think early on, like, it, obviously going to Basketball Without Borders was eye-opening. It was like, okay, like, the NBA is something real. Like, it's, it's, I can I can feel it, you know, like, I've seen players, I, I've touched an NBA player, so in my head, I'm like, okay, like, this, it's there. They um, seem like humans to Yeah, you. they seem and like normal human, people. You're so a I'm human, like, so I'm you're like, like, oh, I'm not uh, Yeah, like, this is cool. Like, you know, like, they're actually really cool people. And 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 from there, it was like, all right, let's 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 see what, like, I, I want to do it. And and my dad was always, like, kind of like, because he, he always, like, saw things that we couldn't really see, like, you know, like, and, and I always thought, like, he, he, he thought of things, like, back home for us was, like, not taboo, but, like, not a lot of people thought of those things you know he sent all his kids to the u.s to get education um the he you know all my brothers play basketball so it was like okay the nba was something that they wanted to do but then again i didn't want to be like my brother so i wanted to do something different but then once i got to that level it was like yo like this is like my dad really pushed pushed me to like believe that like it's possible you know like and and again like you said i, I never really played basketball that much so i'm like okay like how am i gonna get to the nba you know like um but but once you know talking to him and like he he really instilling that belief in me and i started believing in myself and and, and i think that combined with the hard work just just made me like yo like this is possible your dad passed your your redshirt year yeah it, it, it passed, he passed my your redshirt yeah, year my redshirt year in college. and so you weren't playing on the team mm. and you weren't allowed to go back yeah 
that I can't even imagine how yeah. fucking hard that was. Yeah, man. Like I, I always say like it was the hardest time of my like on my life. Like I don't think I've never went through anything harder than that. Like just because like and, and that's why like even like when things don't like don't happen my way, I always kind of like think back at that. And I, and I'm like, man, like this, it was just, it was, it was devastating just knowing that like, I can't be with my family. I, I, I can't be with anyone. Like, you know, like I had, um, obviously credit to my, to my teammates, you know, like I had, I had awesome people that was there for me and, and my coaches and, and, and they were there, but just missing that like family, you know, love and, 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 and wanting to just go back and and and, and seeing your dad because one thing like the the day before he passed like I miss his call so in my head I'm like like you know like it, it was it was so much so it was hard and, and and I can't go anywhere and I can't talk to you know I can't have nobody that kind of relates to me you know like I, I don't have family that's there for me um and and yeah like I, I it was just one of the, the the toughest time in my life just just going through that and and just not not having you know like yeah i fall alone like yeah i, I never felt like that before like well I, I assume he was the first person you thought of when you heard your name called on nba draft mm. night right yep for sure like and I, you I, still I, play i, I mean I, still, I read something you he's the best best man you've ever known yeah and like, you still play for him yeah no that's yeah he's just just because again like i said like he he always thought of things that that that, that we we didn't think of and, and and people thought it was crazy like and 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 he always believed in these things, and and all my brothers play basketball, and, and it was like, yo, like I wish they can make it, and 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 I was finally that person that that made it, um, and 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 it was just like, like you know, I just sat there, was like, you happy, but it's like, like, like I want him to be here, like this is this is the reason why this is happening. It gave us all opportunities to to be in a position to be successful, and 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 he he's not here to like kind of like, you know, enjoy it, um. And and I remember just all my brothers being together and and we just sat and cried like for like you know the, the whole like sort of like ten fifteen minutes just just being grateful but then also like just just feeling sad that he's not there to enjoy the moment. Um, speaking of the draft, I read in, in the ESPN article it there's a there's a good anecdotal story in there about your workout with the Raptors. Oh man. <laughs> 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 Yeah. yeah, I'll let you explain it, but eventually, it basically, it sounds like they weren't viewing you at the time as a first round pick. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it was like a it was a strategy. I don't know what it was, man. Like, I, but but yeah, that 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 because I remember. So I come in and and I talked to my agent before I talked to Todd. I talked to Jafar, and like they're just like you know they're preparing me like yo like yeah this is you know as the Raptors let's get it like I think they in a you know like a spot where. You, you might you might be able to get drafted because it was always like late first second round right like um so in my head i'm like all right like i'm, I'm super pumped you know go go to raptors get my workout in and i see the names i'm supposed to work out with and i'm it was it was yakapoto in the list it was um scala this year and in my head i'm like oh yeah like this is this is the guys you know like i'm, I'm excited i'm super pumped um i'm just you know preparing myself i get there like i, I got my headphones on like i'm, I'm focused I get to the locker and it's like, okay, like I, I see two little lockers on the side. And it was like, it was like Jakob Locker, it was like Scott Yacob Locker. And I'm like, okay, like what's going on? I was like, all right, maybe it's just, you know, whatever. I'm here getting ready. And I go on the court and it was like, and I'm like, okay, like what, what, uh, you know, like what is, I'm, I'm not, I don't see Jakob, I don't see Scott. And I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, but yeah, like they, they're going to have like one on one workouts over there. So you're going to, Work. I don't even remember who was in the workout. Like whoever, <laughs> whoever was with us, with me on my workout. I don't even know the them. B squad. It was the it B was squad. it was the not, not even the B. I was the Z squad. I don't know what what squad I was, but but yeah. Like so, in my head, I'm like I'm pissed. Like so, I think I don't know if I texted my agent or something. I'm like oh, I'm pissed. I'm like yo, what's going on? Like so at, at that point, I'm just seeing red. Like I, I'm 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 like yo like. This is disrespectful. I, I I don't care, you know. Like, so in my workout, I'm going. I don't think I've. Yeah, it was just crazy. Like I was going crazy, blocking shots, running, um, scoring, defending, doing everything. And and it was just like, yo. After the workout, I call my agent. I'm like, yo. Like I just, I'm mad. Like I'm I'm sick. But I'm like, yo. I just killed this workout. So I felt good. Like after the workout, I'm like, yo. I killed this. And I mean, I mean, I think. 
Yeah, I did fall that way too. So so it was it was had, good. Had after. you done a bunch of workouts before then? Yeah, I think I had like twenty workouts probably like my whole pre draft. Yeah. I work out for almost every team. Yeah. <laughs> It's the guys, the guys who generally, I feel bad for the guys who are in that range. Just had to deal yeah. with says, angry you're, <laughs> you're You're targeted in like the 25 to 35 range. So many it's people. Like, all right, well, I got to work out for everybody 15 through 30. Mm-hmm. And then all the teams that drafted first in the lottery yep. get the early picks in the second, the second round. So, so I got to get work, work out. out yeah, so I worked out for literally almost every team, to be honest. I think... A day before the draft, I had a workout or like or something. Like I think Orlando was my last workout, so I worked out there, and then I just stayed there for, for to watch the draft because it was like literally like a day before the draft. Did you get a sense right after the workout with the, the Raptors that they were gonna, or they, well, that there was a good chance they were gonna pick you, well, or was I, it coming I, as a surprise as, as, on draft day? Yeah, it, it came as well because again, like I knew what I did, right? Like I, I'm thinking like, yo, this is, yeah, like you know, like I felt good after the workout, but still like. Um, I, I wasn't sure. Like I, I didn't really know if they was gonna pick me. Um, just because, again, like it was like my range was so like it was like yo, you could you could either be twenty or you could not even get drafted. So it's like um, I didn't know. I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't expect it. My, my agent is confident, but it's like I mean, that's every agent, right? Like I think I think every agent on draft night probably tell the client that they're gonna get drafted, but it's like yo, <laughs> are you really gonna get drafted? You know? So um, so yeah, I, I didn't know. How much did you know about the guys in the team? before you uh got picked um well because in in new mexico i i had um maybe like four teammates out from canada um so they always uh, they always bragged about canada oh my god canada is this awesome place toronto is this awesome place um this is happening so they always watch the raptors so i think i had an early like you know connection to toronto and, and canada in general because of those guys and 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 I love the way they talk, like you know the slang and all that. So like I always would hang out with them, and 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 um, I think I, I knew a little bit about it. Um, I didn't realize this until we were doing research on you, but we were talking about it at breakfast this morning. Your rookie year, you started in thirty eight games, yeah, and you also spent three months at the end of the season in the G League. Which is crazy. Oh my God. Like man. you started opening night. Yeah. I, I just, I hate talking about this because. <laughs> no, well, well, I don't you, hate you talking got, about You got it. the G League Finals MVP. But, you, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. you obviously did well, but. Yeah, but I don't say I hate talking about it in terms of, I'm just saying like, yo, like I really started. Like my first game was a start. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so in my head, I'm thinking like, man, like this is, this is awesome, man. Like my first NBA game that I've ever been in, like, period. Like, I never watched any any, any NBA game before that. My first, it's a start. You know, we play in Detroit. I'm, I'm excited, man. Like, this is, like, this is the dream. And, and we started, like, I think we, was, we were winning. So, it's like, yo, we had an awesome record in the beginning of the year. So, I'm thinking, like, yo, I'm, I'm making this. And then it's like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and I think just getting sent to the jilly was, like, crazy, man. Like, just because... Obviously, like, I, I mean, I come from humble beginnings, but um, being in the NBA and, and starting and, like, it was just the bright lights and, like, from the beginning, and then you have to get sent to the G League. And, and, and I mean, you go to, to cities where, the, like, the best restaurant is IHOP. Um, not, I mean, I love IHOP, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> there's no, like, you know, like, we, we have to figure out your food. Um you, you like you're the not bus. staying at the Four Seasons. Yeah, you're, you're not staying at the Four Seasons. Like, you, man. This is actually... He got a he got a, an insane taste. It's you crazy, got an insane taste, and then and then like backtrack just, and just like backtrack like twenty <laughs> steps back. Yeah, like it baseball, was bad. I feel like I feel like baseball is really the only other sport where that happens. That's crazy. Where you have that, and then you have to go back and forth. Mm, and just, yeah, like it was because I literally I had to like I'm starting we winning games like I'm I'm super excited like just the Raptors fans going crazy. And then you get sent to Judy for like, oh, I think I've went there for like a whole month at one, at one point, like a whole road trip they had for like two weeks. And it was like, oh my God, like this, this is how, like this is how they, like, this is what's happening. Like, you know what I mean? In my head, I'm like, yo, what's happening? Did you, did you have a, your rookie year, did you have a welcome to the NBA moment? Hmm. Welcome. Well, my first preseason game, I had to guard Kevin Durant. It was like my first preseason game. And I'm like, oh man, like what's, what's going <laughs> on? Like... Yeah, because I used to watch this guy on TV, you know, like this is not like it's not normal. And my first time, I just had to guard him, and and yeah, it was it was it was tough. And one of the moments I, I like, I don't really say it, and well, I haven't had the opportunity to say it, but um, I pre-draft even before the NBA. So I 
I went to LA because I worked out with Rico and, and, and we were there and I got there and um, he was like, yeah, we got pros and, and, and yeah, like, and, and it was like the first person like I saw was like Chris Copeland. I don't know if he, he, he played, yeah, Indiana, all that. So I don't even think he was in the league at that point. Like, I don't even think he was still in the league. So I get there and I'm like, yeah, like, I'm trying to work out and and we play. And I'm like, because I'm, I'm looking like, yeah, I'm like, I don't see, I mean, because that's my guy. Like, it's Chris Chris is my is my dog, but I'm just like, yo, like, hey, I'm good out here, you know? Like, there's no super talented NBA player here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be good. Man, Chris... <sighs> Boy, this guy was just threes, like, and his body type is a little, like, you know, I'm skinny. I'm like, so he getting me on the post, turn around, jumper, shooting threes. He's driving, pushing me, like, literally, like, it was like, yo, like, this is crazy. And this guy's not even, like, in the NBA right now. And, like, he was, like, giving me, like, problems, bro. Like, I don't think... That was like my first time. I was like, "Yo, like this guy's is different." Like, and it was like before the NBA, and and I always love like we always talk about it because because I always tell Chris like, "Yo, like from from that first day, it was like, I'm like, yo, anybody in the NBA can get you buckets, right? Like that was my moment right there. Like, and and he was so smooth and like he he could do everything, and and I was just like, I always remember that, and and every time now we play after that. I make sure I, you know, I, I bust his ass, like, kind of like, just to like, to make sure like, yo, Chris, you killed me that, but like, yeah, but Never we always again. laugh about that. Yeah. yeah, we always laugh about that. I, it goes back, we, we keep bringing up this quote, but it's a great quote, the Brian Scalabrini quote, quote mm. that he said to a random uh, fan who said he could beat him one-on-one. Yep. He said, listen, buddy, I'm closer to LeBron than you are to me. <laughs> I think it's important to note just how good NBA players yes. are, right? Mm-hmm. I, any opportunity I get to say this, there's so many good basketball players yep. out there, guys that are in Europe, fringe guys mm-hmm. guys that are in the g league yep. so many great basketball players it, it really is an honor to to be one of the guys in the league yes sir um by the way chris this is such the universe is so weird mm. chris copeland and i were texting the other day oh yeah <laughs> oh bizarre. man that's funny chris is <laughs> he my reached out god. to me yeah i mean it's yeah that's my god weird how man. that happens yeah um your, shout out shout out chris man. yeah, yeah. Shout out my your, your arc though in your rookie contract is insane hmm like you talk about someone who played basically half of the se- his rookie season in the G League was a 18 20 minute a minute a night guy coming mm-hmm. off the bench his second year mm-hmm. third year most improved player on a on a championship level team fourth year second team all NBA all-star starter mm. that ascension is crazy right when did you feel like you started to figure it out um, I think, well, my second year, obviously, like, we had the bench mob. Like, I think, like, that was, like, um... That was a fun team. Yeah, that was, I mean, like, I think this is the most fun, like, to this day. I mean, the championship team was was nice. Like, obviously, we won a championship. But, like, the most fun I had playing basketball was that year, like, with the bench mob. Like, literally, like, me, Fred, CJ Miles, Jakob Perto, DeLon... Um, I mean, like, we got, I think sometimes Norm came off the bench. Like, literally, we had, like, a squad, and, like, we just love playing with each other, right? Like, we love, like, just sharing the ball, like, just, like, running. Like, I mean, obviously, at that time, I'm just, like, I'm I'm going like this, every, like, miles per hour, and, and Jak- Jakob is blocking shots, and CJ just shooting, you know, his lights out, and... And we just we just had so much fun, and 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 it was never like yo like I'm I'm trying to score or whatever. Like it was just all of us like you're gonna get yours, right? Like doing whatever we do as a team. Um, and and yeah, that year I think it was like, man, like I'm really I'm really liking what's happening. And and um, I remember because <laughs> uh, well, C- C- Coach Casey was the coach before, and it was like. Cause I always work with Rico, like we always work with ball handling, like we always thought, like, cause in our head it was always like, yo, like you can do all these things, like I don't know why, you, you know what I mean, you can't do it. So we always worked on it. I couldn't do it in the game, but we <laughs> we we always worked on it. And I think one one funny story I, um, I like to say was like, um, so Coach Casey was like, so I was <laughs> I was dribbling the ball down the court one time, so I, I was doing the DHO and. And literally, everyone was getting denied, and like, so I'm like, I feel like, like going on, on each side, trying to like get the ball to someone, because I'm like, I'm not even looking at the rim at that time. I'm like, yo, I'm just trying to get the ball to somebody, and 
and he was like he was like yelling at me and screaming and he was like oh like just just hold the ball like and make them look like kind of like make them somebody come get it like in terms of like yo like this is what you're supposed to do right like you can't do nothing else and and that always stuck with me because it was like yo like and and from that day i was always telling rico like yo we're gonna keep working on this and we just want to wait on our opportunity and i think when nick came in it was like i think he was all he was more open into like different things and it was like man like you can handle the ball like and and i think Damar and Kyle, they, they also saw it because they saw me work every day. Like, I'm in the gym every day. I'm working on my ball handling. I'm doing this. And they started telling Coach Casey, even, like, by the end of that year, it was like, yo, like, Pascal can bring the ball up, you know? If he gets the rebound, he can dribble down the court and, you know, we can play, like, he can, you know, do whatever. So I think then it was like a little bit, little by little, I know I'm getting more freedom, right? And now it's like I'm trying to get every rebound that I can get because when I get the rebound, I can bring it up. So, and then from there, it was like just slowly, gradually just getting better and better. And and and, and with, with Nick, at some point, it was like equal opportunity type of basketball that we played. And we played like that with the bench mob. And it was like, you know, whenever you get the ball, you can do something, do it. And, and, and I think it started growing from there. And after my second year, obviously, like third year, it was just like a different type of confidence, you know, just coming in. And, and that summer was really important. Again, like I always mention Rico, because like that's, that's like my family. And, and it's like... We always put the work in and, and we get to a certain level. And, and and I felt really good about myself at that time, um, just coming in. And, and I knew there was more opportunities, right? Like, and 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 now I had the freedom to do a little bit more. And and I think that's always, I, I'll try to say to like some of the players is like, yo, like just cause you can't do it in the game, don't mean you, you can't work on it. Like keep working on it because like at some point your opportunity is gonna come. Like somebody's gonna give you that freedom and you gotta be ready. Um, and, and I think I was cause, cause we worked on it. like. Even when I, you know, all I can do is just run and dunk. Uh, do you have any perspective, just like taking a step back, looking at yourself though, taking a step back for a second and being like, you go from your background and then being a guy who didn't even shoot threes, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, even in college really, to being like a second team all NBA player? Because generally, like, we've had a lot of people on the pod who have had crazy backstories and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And making it to the league is a huge accomplishment. Right. But we haven't had anyone on the pod who's been second team all NBA right. who's come through that backstory you know right, what i mean right, to reach right. that yeah. level of uh that level of success yeah no it's it's, it's crazy again I, I would love to say like yo i was expecting it because i put the work in right like but but sometimes just things that happen and and i'm obviously i'm blessed and 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 and, and i give credit to you know everyone that's my team and 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 you know all the people that i work with um we put like hours and hours um, but then also sometimes it's like, you know, just things, things happen, <laughs> things go your way. Like I can, I can sit there and be like, yo, I put everything, yeah. you know, but, but sometimes it just happens. And, and, um, and I think the more I play, the, 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 the more work I put in, the, the more, like the more confident I got in, in my game. And, 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 and once I, I, I just think that I had that confidence and, and, and just seeing even people around you seeing like, you know, like you getting better and. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely like open my eyes to like, kind of like be, believe, be a believer myself. Was, was there a part of Damar and Kyle when you were coming in that helped you with that? Oh yeah, for sure. Like, like, um, I always think like those guys was like, just, it was, it was a perfect thing. Cause you know, Damar was, was quiet. It was, it was chill. Damar was always chill. Um, and then Kyle was, was always like the more vocal person and, and, those two together just like you know they showed us everything like in terms of like you know like Kyle's in here every single day he's the first in the gym um getting his work done in the morning like doing everything and then you know Damar doing the same like every single day like they they in here consistently they're professional like you don't you don't really hear about them like like doing nothing, nothing crazy really um and and they stayed on us like from the beginning and 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 also we had a great group together like coming in like it was me Fred Jakob, um, Norm probably was like his second year or something like Delon like so we had like a young group of guys and then we had vets that was like you know show us how to be but we also had fun like we also you know because we had people that we could have fun with and 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 it was like a crazy dynamic to have and I think that's what made it so so so, so great and 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 yeah I just if one thing I just learned from those guys just being a professional. And obviously the little things they taught us about, like, you know, like how to move and, and, and some of the things that, you know, you, you just can't do in the NBA or like, you know, and, and yeah, it was just great to have those guys. I mean, super blessed to, that they were here when we were here. Hi, I'm Ellen Pompeo, and I would like to introduce you to my new podcast, Tell Me. I am sitting down with Dwayne Wade, three-time NBA champion, an Olympic gold medalist, 
13-time NBA All-Star. He's had an incredible career. I don't feel like nobody really wanted me to retire. Were they pressuring you to stay? Were people like, are you sure you want to do yeah. this? Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah. <laughs> I actually wanted to retire the year before I retired. I was done. And it wasn't from a lack of being able to go out there and score 15 to 18 to 20 points some night. But it was a lot about, I didn't have joy no more in it. You know, I was just doing it because this is what you do. And it just got to a point for me where I decided to take the step because I was ready. And so I gave everybody one more year and it comes to a point in time when you got to look in the mirror and you got to choose you. Listen and follow Tell Me, a podcast presentation of Cadence 13 with me, Ellen Pompeo. Now for free, wherever you get your podcasts. Even though I'm retired from the NBA, the grind from decades of playing basketball has obviously affected my body. And let's face it, I'm certainly not the only one. We all have aches and pains that we have to deal with. Well, now there's help. Pop and Barkley creates award-winning CBD solutions for pain, stress, sleep, and everyday wellness. They have an unmatched, clean, chemical-free, whole plant process with proven results. Pop and Barkley understands wanting the absolute best for the people we care about most. Pop and Barkley founder Adam Grossman created the groundbreaking relief balm to ease his father's debilitating back pain. From that powerful homemade balm, Pop and Barkley has expanded to a full line of topical balms, oils, tinctures, and capsules, all made with 100% natural clean ingredients and whole plant, full spectrum CBD. Pop and Barkley is on a mission to improve lives through CBD in its purest, cleanest form possible. Go to papaandbarkleycbd.com slash JJ for 20% off your first purchase. That's 20% off for new customers at P-A-P-A and B-A-R-K-L-E-Y cbd.com slash JJ. papaandbarkleycbd.com slash JJ. As anyone who listens to this podcast or knows me personally, I occasionally like to enjoy an adult beverage. Well, I want to tell you about one of my favorite new adult beverages. Ranch Rider Spirits is a Texas-based hard seltzer company, and they produce some amazing seltzers. Last summer, a buddy of mine introduced me to Ranch Rider. It was the first seltzer that I actually liked. I was so hyped on the product and branding that I actually reached out to the owners of the company myself to tell them how much I like their goods. In turn, I was so smitten with the company and the vision and what they stand for that I invested myself. My favorite drink they have is Ranch Rider. It's the classic ranch water. If y'all haven't heard of Ranch Water, let me enlighten you. It's a classic Texas cocktail made with tequila, Topo Chico, and a heavy pour of lime juice. All of Ranch Rider's drinks use premium spirits like Reposado Tequila or six-time distilled vodka, sparkling water, and fresh squeezed citrus. They don't use any added sugars or artificial preservatives. As they say, no sugar, no shit. If you want to try Ranch Rider for yourself, you can get 20% off your online order using Old Man 3. O-L-D-M-A-N, the number three, Old Man 3. That's ranchriderspirits.com slash JJ. Use the promo code Old Man 3. Look, if you're into clothes that not only look amazing, but feel amazing as well, then Roback Activewear is the no-brainer choice. I've been wearing these products for the last few months. I absolutely love them. I took them on my golf trips. It's fantastic. I've posted a bunch of stuff on the gram. I love their products. We've tried them. We can confidently say, best fit, best feel. First, Roback's performance polos are truly game-changing. You won't find a better-looking, better-feeling performance polo. Their collars don't lose their shape, and their four-way stretch is unmatched. Second, Roback's new performance hoodies are a total game-changer. Maybe the softest, stretchiest hoodies in the game. You know we are experienced hoodie guys, true, and we literally wear them all the time. I wore my Roback performance hoodie to dinner last night. I loved it. Hmm. And third, Roback's performance Q-zips are incredibly comfortable, perfect for a day in the office, a round of golf, or a night out. They are the definition of versatile. You simply cannot go wrong with anything they make. So go and use the code OLDMAN on Roback.com for a generous 20% off your first purchase. Roback is spelled R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. That's 20% off all polos, Q-zips, hoodies, and tees with code OLDMAN. They just dropped new hoodies and Q-zips that will have you feeling good and looking fresh. Not to mention, Roback polos make great gifts for the holidays. Tommy, what are you getting me for the holidays? It's a surprise. I'm not saying it on this show. <laughs> You're going to find out. <laughs> you are too. All right. <laughs> did you have an inkling that the Kawhi trade was going to happen before it happened? Or did it come as a surprise? Um, hmm, definitely a surprise. 
because <laughs> yeah, I know I know Demar told probably that told that story like a thousand times already. Um, we was in Vegas and all that, so like uh, I didn't I didn't think nothing was really gonna gonna, gonna happen. Um, and and it was like I think I remember I went to dinner with my agent. I was in Vegas and we we was talking and like literally like it just came like a, a couple of hours after that it was like the trade and I'm like I'm sitting there like oh my god like what's going on like you know what I mean like yeah I didn't. I didn't expect it at all. Yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the finals that year. Mm. Um, just p- going up against that Golden State team. Obviously, they had won two straight championships. Um, you know, Kevin's banged up. Mm-hmm. Uh, couldn't have predicted Clay would go down in Game yep. Six, but the, that your your team's mindset going into that into that series, going up against. Uh, an historic, an historically great team who mm-hmm. had won two straight championships. Where was sort of the level of confidence and and just the level of euphoria that you were that you had? Because I always tell people like, the deeper you go in the playoffs, mm. the, the more awesome it gets. Yep, yep. There's just so many eyes. There's so much it's, buzz. Yeah, it's like there's every so much day. Co- every round you advance, you just feel more confident. Mm-hmm. Like it's 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 sort of like getting to the Super Bowl, right, you know, right. and. Uh, and so just where was your team at going to that series facing those guys? Yeah, and I think like you're saying, like even the finals, like, yo, like the media is crazy. Like every single game, every single practice. Like, so it's just like, it's so like, the, I feel like everything just feels brighter, right? Like it, 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 it was crazy. And I think for us coming in, we played like Golden Steel well, like all year we felt like, you know, like, so um, again, I liked, you know, playing against them because it was, it was mostly, like, guys that, that can, you know, there was no real big guy, really, right? Like, they all guards. I mean, I'm like, I like to like to guard guards and we can switch, like, we can do all those things. Um, and, and and obviously, I mean, they, when they had KD and, like, you know, like and, and, and Clay and all that, it's, like, harder. And I think for us, it was like, oh, okay, like, some of those guys going down. It was like, now it's like, yo, we just, we just got a triple team Curry. Like, and then, like, we all, like, at the end of the day, like... <laughs> Not saying the other guys are not good, but like, yo, I just don't want Curry to get fifty. Like, that's it. You know what I mean? And the rest, like, we can fight. Like, we're gonna we're gonna scrap. Like, pass the ball to somebody. We running out there. We, you know, like challenging. But I think for us, like, we we thought we had a chance because just because like we we always played them well. Like, you know, obviously it was Golden State, but in our heads it was like the way we matched up. We felt like like it was a good matchup for us. Like, you know, like I think. Playing Philly was like super tough because, like, you know, like it was like you, you got it, Joe. They have like really tall and like physical team. I'm not saying that Golden State wasn't physical, but like they had more like you know, like it's more like you know guards and and, and it's like kind of guard play. And 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 for us, it matched what we did because everyone could switch. You know, like we we had we had the personnel to do it. Um, and I mean, it was gonna be a lot harder with with Kevin Durant and and and, and you know what I mean, like in there, but. Um, but I, I I like that matchup to be honest. What did you What did you make of Fred's run, St- starting in that Milwaukee? Series? Oh my goodness! Yeah, we, we always think we, we we always thank God for for the baby man. We all we all <laughs> even when I when I see when I see little Freddie right now in a tunnel somewhere, I'm just, I'm just trying to give him a dab. Like yo, came in man, Fred was because again like he. The, the the Philly series was he like he didn't play. Great. It was crazy. It was yeah. crazy for him, right? Like, because I think, like I said again, size. You guys had so much size, um, and it was super tough. Um, and I think when he, you know, obviously, he got to the, the Milwaukee series, he was just going crazy. Like, I don't know, that boy. Yeah, he was he was on another level. Like just making threes. Um, obviously, like the job that he like on defense. Obviously, his defense is always there. But but I think on offense, his confidence obviously like just grew from that Milwaukee series, um, and he, he just gave us like a, because because I think it's always easy to just be like oh, Kawhi is the reason why we won right like it's, that's the that's the easiest thing to do. But I think one thing you can say is like I mean Kawhi went to the Clippers like like it wasn't that easy. It's not it's not that easy to win like you need like you need people. Like, you know, and I think for us, who was willing to understand, like, his role, like, we understood everything, and we just matched well, like, and we had other guys that can do so much, you know? Like, when you think about Kyle, Fred, and, you know, Serge was playing Serge well. Serge had some great moments. Serge had some great run. moments, yeah. and I think everyone had their moments, like, and when you look at it, it was like everyone had their moments when they went. Obviously, Kawhi took us to a lot of places, but 
there was the Milwaukee game where Fred went crazy. There was me game one in the finals going crazy. There was me first game Philly. Yeah. There was so I think like there was like so many other moments. It was Kyle that first like that game six going crazy. Game and, and six, Kyle, yep. Yeah. So I think like we, we it's it's cool to to say all that, but I felt like we was just a team like and and we had. You know, like we had people that at, at certain places, at certain times, that just came and and played an, an incredible level. And and again, Fred was was one of those guys. So I, I want to follow up on something you brought up earlier, and and this is in no way to disparage Dwayne Casey, who I think is one of the great mm-hmm. coaches in the NBA. Um, but specifically about Nick, mm-hmm. why do you think Nick was ended up being the right guy to right. to bring this team to bring this team a championship to a team that had had a high seed a number of times, right, made, right. made deep finals, but not gone over the over the hump. Right. Yeah, I think one of the things like I just said, it was like he was diff- like he was thinking different. Like he, he didn't like a box and one. On yeah, curry. like yeah, he like we would do crazy stuff. Like you know what I mean? Like, and I think like he's not afraid. He wasn't afraid to try different things. You know, not saying that other coaches are, but like I'm like I think he was just more open to to trying new things and 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 using guys in this, in a different way and like you know like just in. And like I said, equal. It was kind of like an equal opportunity type of offense where you know, like, it's not just me sitting in the corner hoping that I'll get the ball ever. You know, it's like us moving the ball and like you know, we everyone can touch it. Like, you, and 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 you have guys that can do multiple things. Um, and 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 I don't know. It was just like it was just like the perfect perfect timing to, for him. And and he came in and and definitely instilled confidence in a lot of us. Um, and and gave us the opportunity to, to to do way more and 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 again like it wasn't it was outside the box like he was he was thinking and, and trying things that hadn't been really done. So so you just mentioned this uh, and I feel like a lot of people right now are probably wondering this. If you're not going to triple him, how are you supposed to defend Steph? Yeah, man, I don't know. Yeah, I can't, I can't tell you that, bro. <laughs> like this guy is like I mean. Most of the time, it feels like he's just like throwing that thing up. Like it goes in every time. Like he's just so incredible, you know. Like and 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 I think one of the things that we always done is like, yo, like we we gonna try to take the, the best player out. Like that's sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But um, especially with a guy as as as, as you know incredible as Curry, that's what you have to do. You have to like. You, there's, there's no. You can I, I can't just watch him just come off screens and, and shoot from like half court knowing that he's going in and still let him do it. You know what I mean? Like, and and I know sometimes it's like, oh yeah, you think he's far, but like, bro, this but this guy is like a layup, so it's like, you you have to take away um, what he does best, and 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 yeah, you, I think you have to. I, I, that's to answer your question, you yeah. have to, bro. Like, you have to you have to basically try to make someone else yes go like, for go for thirty. Yeah, for me, it's like I think yeah. I'd rather watch. I don't know, like the third best player or the fourth best player on that team score than like seeing the best player just get whatever they, they, they want. And and I yeah. I don't remember Draymond and him doing this last year, but the thing I've seen a bunch this year is when you blitz him with the big, mm-hmm. he'll just get off the ball super early to Draymond, <sighs> and then Draymond will come right back for a DHL because. Yeah. If you're, if you, I'm sure guarded mm-hmm. guys, yep. and you've been in a trap. But if you're the guy guarding the ball in a mm-hmm. trap, as soon as he gives up that ball, mm-hmm. your natural instinct is yes. to turn yep. because now it's a four on three. Mm-hmm. And what and they figured out back. is he's coming right back mm-hmm. off the DHO. And I, they, yeah. they did a similar thing last year, but it wasn't on that. But it was yeah. just the way that Draymond was flipping screens. Yeah, like the two of them to me, the tandem there, the mm-hmm. the level of basketball intelligence, yeah. obviously Curry's skill set, mm-hmm. but Draymond is a screener. Draymond is a passer. passer yeah. Draymond willing to manipulate defenses. Mm-hmm. They're, just, they're just so smart. No, that's no, yeah. that's. I mean, that's what makes them so hard to guard. I think so. And 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 one thing is like that's underrated. Is like. Steph, like, level of conditioning is crazy. Because I think for me, just watching him, like, he he gives up the ball and he always moving. Like, he, like just running and, and he can still run that fast and trying to get open. And once he catches it, like, he can still make it like it was a layup. You know, like, I think for me, that's like, because, again, if it was just somebody that, that when he gives the ball up and he could, you can kind of, like, be there and he's going to, like, just stay there a little bit and kind of, like, give up, he keeps moving the whole possession from here to here and still have the level like like you know focus to like make the shot every time and and obviously like those guys finding them it's, it's incredible but but yeah like they Steph I think Steph just you know yeah his his 
I don't know. I think his conditioning. I think it's, it's underrated because the way he runs everywhere to get open every night is crazy. We we like asking this to a lot of guys. Uh, if you can't name, you can't name any of your teammates. Are there younger guys around the league you either just like watching, like playing against, who you feel like are sort of on the way up? Um, like younger, like yeah, like you, like you a couple years ago. You know, mm-hmm. you before everybody sort of figured it out. Right, 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 right. Um, hmm. who right now do I like? I like watching. That was a good question. Caught me off guard right there. Wants to say Scotty. Yeah, I mean, I, you say all the same. No, but team. it's like so like, obvious. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it's like, like, I want to say Scotty. We know that. But by the way, like I think, I think even people who who watch the show or listen to the show, like they know that now too. And not that they have to be like totally under the radar, mm-hmm. but just like you know, people that like you wouldn't normally expect. Like maybe in the first couple months, who you played against, and you're just like, oh yeah, like they got something. Oh, that's tough, bro. Like, I, I don't, think I don't about know. Could, yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. I can think, yeah, about, yeah, think yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, my, my, my natural like, yeah. answer was Scotty because I'm like, yo, like... I this. mean, he's... Well, well, what about... So we should talk about Scotty. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, no. Like, I think, like, things that he can do on the floor, like, is 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 is, is, is crazy. Um, His length and... and, and I think he, he he has really good basketball IQ. He can pass. Um, And, and I think his offensive game is just going to keep growing. Um, but 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 what he can do on defense and 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 you know guard one through five, yeah. Like I think is is the sky. The sky. You can see that from, from day one with him. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. Like you can definitely see. It. And I, and I think again, it's the opportunity, right? Like there's there's a lot of people coming in that that don't get the opportunity to play right away as a rookie. Like and the experience that you get um, is just is just something that that's just gonna carry you like like over the years. And and I think he's just only gonna get better. I got one more question, Tommy, and. I haven't really asked anybody this <laughs> that was on the team last year, but going to Tampa last year, oh, having man. to relocate, um, and obviously Florida was a little different mm-hmm. than some other states that NBA teams are located in, but we still had to abide, especially after January 10th, we still had to abide by those protocols. But mm-hmm. just how weird, how difficult, yeah. how much did, did moving the team down to Tampa sort of affect last season? Yeah, I think it was tough, man. Like, and and one thing is like you also started to think for us it's like right like I mean it's hard to move around but it's like we have the ability to do it right like we had like now we have staff and all these people that don't really you know like they don't they're not one of us and and they can't really do all this and they can't really move their families there and and be with their families and and um and and those guys it was tough on them and I just seeing them going through that and us just trying to navigate through it now you have to find get a new routine and and knowing you know like. This was home. It's comfort, like and and as players, we know we love that. You know, like sometimes you, you want to go back and sleep on your bed, and and you know what's happening. And and for people that have families, like now you have to move your whole family somewhere. And like I mean, your kids, if you have kids, you have to go to school somewhere. Um, it's just it was just so much. I rock, like you know. And then we go to an arena where it's like. I mean, some nights we got booed, so I'm like, I don't even know who's our fans or not. Like, I think it was just like random basketball fans. Like, you know, people just go out there. You're gonna see people like we played, we played Golden State. And you're gonna see a Memphis jersey, and you're gonna see a <laughs> Dallas jersey over there. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, what's going on? You know what I mean? Like, it was just like so random, and and you get to the court, you never know who you're gonna see. Like, <laughs> like so for me, I'm just like seen on the court. Like, you don't even know who. Like, it was it was crazy, man. It was I, I, weird. I remember when you guys, the Pelicans played, opening I think night. the first opening night mm. in Tampa last year. And I think we talked to, I was like, who's at this game? Like, like who, like, there's random people in no, Tampa. No, I think it's just like, people just like, yo, this is, you have a date tonight. Like, all right, let's go to the game, man. Like, what team you, you support? Like, yeah, I, I like Golden State. Like, it's not even Golden State playing tonight. Like, it's like Boston. Like, <laughs> and they're just people just going on, like, just hanging out and, you you score and it doesn't even feel like you know sometimes it's like oh you score and like yeah, people are going crazy and it's like these people are just cheering for anybody they're booing you or yeah, they're, like, they're booing <laughs> or they're cheering for the other team or this team like so they just want to watch basketball it's literally like an exhibition game every every night it was just weird um, but you've had but hold on but you've had the luxury of mm-hmm. playing for the Raptors your whole career right. and Toronto home games the Raptors fan base one of the best in the NBA one of the best in sports mm-hmm. uh, the way they support their team. There are, and I've played in some of those places where you have a home game, mm-hmm. and if it's the Bulls or the Warriors or the Lakers yep. or the Heat or the Knicks, yep. it feels a little bit like a road game. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, 
to hear you talk about Tampa that way is not a surprise. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Like, <laughs> it was, it was, for us, it was crazy because it was like, man, like, what's going on in here? I mean, literally, it was crazy. You had to, to, to be there, like, sometimes. It's like, we had the games and I was like, like, what is going on? We're in an arena and, like, it feels just strange. Um, and, and, and I mean, the only good thing was, like, it was, it was warm. Like, that's the only, I think for everyone, if you ask anyone, like, they enjoy that part. Like, you could go home and, and you know, you, you sit in outside in the backyard, it's, it's warm. And, and, but, but I think that was the, the only good thing about that. Like, the rest was just, like, you know, us just, you know, missing our fans and, and missing home and, and wanting to have that feeling again. And, and, and yeah, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't natural being out there. Coldest weekend I ever spent in my life was 2016 All Star Break <laughs> All-Star in Toronto. Break. I heard that. That was the last three point contest, right? You did, right? Yeah. That was the coldest weekend of my life. Yeah, I the heard that. Entire weekend was like negative five without mm. the wind chill. That's crazy. And you know, the wind off those lakes, it was just. It yeah, was bad, I, right? I heard that. That I, People always tell me stories about that. Like, it was, <laughs> it was crazy. The worst weekend it was ever. crazy. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate the time, man. And uh, thank you for for sharing your story. And uh, best of luck, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Again, like I said, I feel big time now, man. I made it. I made it. Mama, I made it. <laughs>